Next generation sequencing technologies are the modern day sequencing technologies. Uh, if we look into the history of sequencing technologies, uh, we see that uh, human genome project was sequenced by using Sanger sequencing methods. Uh, Sanger sequencing method uh, has been there for about 25 years till we reach in year 2000 when uh, there was a company called as uh, Lynx uh, Therapeutics uh, which was later on named as Solexa uh, that marketed uh, massively parallel signature sequencing technique in year 2000. Uh, this technique uh, led to the uh, development and discovery of uh, next generation sequencing machines. For the last time, I'm sure guys, so we are looking into this evolution of sequencing technology with uh, a time scale. We have seen that significant milestones if we look into it. So we have seen that uh, DNA was discovered in 1953. First sequence of 24 base pairs was published by Maxim and Gilbert in 73. Sanger sequencing came in 1977. Obviously, both of them, Sanger and Gilbert, they shared a Nobel Prize in 1980 for these uh, discoveries. Another distinction is development of PCR. And then we see that uh, automated sequencers, they came uh, into being in uh, 1987. Uh, the first of them that was uh, presented by ABI, Applied Biosystems. It was called as PRISM 373 machine. Capillary sequencers, they came into the picture again by ABI in 1996. Then we see here, here comes the next generation sequencing system. So first of them that was there in year 2005, that was the GS20 system, 454 technology. Uh, we will look into these technologies in detail later on. And uh, Solexa presented their genome analyzer in 2006, uh, whereas the applied biosystem ABI gave its machine called as SOLID that came in 2007. And then we have seen uh, there is a single molecule sequencers. Uh, basically, it was uh, what we know today is called as the third generation. So we don't need to amplify them. In the next generation sequencing, uh, we amplify the sequences uh, with the help of the PCR. And this PCR got some technical issues. So they were kind of bypassed in these technologies here. Then ion torrent, uh, which is again next generation sequencing machine, came in 2011. We see the uh, Pacific Biosciences also introduced a PASS biosystem in 2011, same year. So again, it's a single molecule sequencer. And uh, Oxford Nanopore Technologies, they have demonstrated the use of their ultra long single molecule reads, which came in 2012. So let's see what's next generation sequencing is. So next generation sequencing is a catch-all term uh, that can also be known as high throughput sequencing or massively parallel signature sequencing. So what happens here is that uh, the, these uh, actually uh, these, these techniques are used by different companies and they have developed their different systems. So all of them uh, we put them together as the next generation sequencers. Uh, for example, we have Illumina sequencing, uh, we have Roche 454, uh, we, we have uh, ion torrent and solid sequencing. So all of them, they are put into the NGS or next generation sequencing technologies. Uh, what they do? So NGS machines, uh, they uh, sequence the, uh, they perform massively parallel sequencing uh, where uh, they, they sequence millions of the fragments to, all together and there is a high throughput. So the throughput means uh, high processing. So we can take the sequences, uh, we break them into short fragments and we put them together and we sequence them. So normally there are millions of the sequences uh, which are uh, put together and sequenced together. And at the same time, uh, we can have uh, more than uh, 500,000 sequencing reactions uh, running in parallel in these machines. Here, for instance, uh, we can see an uh, alumina flow cell. Uh, normally, these uh, sequences, uh, they are sequenced in those lanes. Uh, so we see here there are eight different lanes. So this is uh, actually a glass slide-like thing. So our sequences, and they come and flow through them. And then and within these lines, they pass on. And if we take the cross-section of these lines, uh, we see what we call them as these, uh, these stations. So in these stations, uh, we have the primers which are attached. So individual fragments, they come and attach to these primers, and then they are sequenced over here. So in this way, uh, we can have parallel sequencing of millions of these sequences 
all together at the same time. So as a whole, uh, this speeds off the process, but at the same time, we get a huge amount of data. The advantages of this system is uh, obviously we don't need to have clean rooms for that and obviously the whole sequencing reaction is there in this slide like thing. In the NGS uh, technologies, uh, we can have different generations of those sequencers. Uh, if we look into the Sanger sequencing, we can say it was first generation, uh, whereas the second or the next generation is uh, what we are talking about today, uh, the NGS machines. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the third generation, uh, which we have right here, we will talk about that later, so in which the amplification uh, through the PCR has been uh, eliminated and uh, uh, the molecules, DNA molecules are directly sequenced. Uh, different technologies which use that technique, third generation or we can also call it as next to next generation sequencing. Uh, these are helicos, PassBio, ion torrent and Oxford nanopore. Here are some of the uh, sequencers, the next generation sequencers. Uh, we have this GS Flex 454 from Roche. Uh, we have HiSeq machine, uh, it is uh, very uh, frequently used from Illumina. Uh, we have ABI solid here, we have an uh, intolerant and we also have a GS Junior machine over here. Illumina has been uh, mostly used uh, because of its uh, popularity and because of its uh, uh, flow design techniques uh, in which we are using those flow cells and uh, there is another uh, technique which is the uh, polony PCR. Uh, rest of the machines they are using the emulsion PCR so they have some issues with them so uh, it got more success. Uh, advantages of this uh, next generation sequencers is that uh, they produce, uh, um, they can sequence DNA or RNA molecules in a quick time and obviously as, as compared to uh, the other if we use the Sanger sequencing that is slow and uh, that can also be expensive in terms of uh, having so many gels. So it bypasses all those steps and there is the direct sequencing and uh, which, is, uh, which is very efficient. So in parallel you have so many reactions all together and that saves your time. But obviously there is an issue that you have your read sizes are really small. Here is a general workflow for next generation sequencing. We take our material DNA or RNA and then uh, we convert them into the fragments that may be processed into our machines. Uh, we call this step as library preparation and after library preparation uh, we do that uh, PCR, uh, we amplify those fragments. So actually what we want here is uh, we want to have so many same uh, molecule fragments. So in this way when we do the sequencing uh, we will have our strong signals. So there are two types of PCRs, one is emulsion PCR and one is uh, polony. So emulsion has been uh, used in ion torrent 454 and solid. Solid can also make use of polony PCR, but polony PCR is mainly exhibited in Illumina machines. So we conclude that NGS technologies, uh, they sequence millions of sequences altogether and uh, they sequence DNA in relatively uh, less amount of money and in quick frame of time.